broadcasting from the studios of WKEN, where every day it's the weekend. It's the Ken Calvert Show with your host, Ken Calvert. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the casual studios of WKEN, where every day it's the weekend. Coming up today on my podcast, I have a chat with Thomas Hayden Church. From 1997, we were talking about his part in the Disney flick, George, George, George of the Jungle. Watch out for that tree. Now, fast forward 22 years, and he's starring in the April 9th release of Hellboy, playing the part of Lobster Boy. And I know nothing about it, but I did look at the previews for it on YouTube, the channel, YouTube channel, all. All the kids are talking about it. And uh, there are over 10 million views of the trailer for it, so it's got to be big, right? Now, I want to start by saying I I haven't been around for the past two or three weeks, and and I apologize for that. And I hope, I really do hope you miss me. Uh, I've been one poor correspondent. I've been too, too hard to find. But it doesn't mean you ain't been on my mind. Oh, my God, I was just quoting lyrics from the band America. Do you remember America? Actually, what was that from? Sister Golden Hair, and I have no business uh, remembering that. Actually, a lot of you should remember the band America, if you don't look them up. Three guys, and I think that they were all the sons. They were army brats. They grew up on an um, army base, I believe in Germany. That was the backstory on it. And I just looked it up. The song was one of two number ones for the band. And I want to tell you something. We pounded the crap out of that song when I was at WWW back in 1973-74. Horse with no name. I think that one still gets a ton of airplay, don't you think? Tin Man, never hear that one. Ventura Highway, you hear that every once in a while. Now, this got me to thinking all of a sudden. Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young... Cat Stevens, James Taylor, Billy Joel, Elton John, Chicago, Toto, Boss Skaggs, the Doobie Brothers, with and without Michael McDonald, the Hollies, America, which I mentioned, Fleetwood Mac, Journey, and so on. Now, those soft rock songs that lived inside the progressive or free-form rock format was actually the genesis for a new format called the soft rock format. And that was just one of the many subsets that grew out of freeform, progressive, or if you'd like, album-oriented rock, AOR. So a bunch of formats grew out of the late 60s and early 70s. You've got active rock. You've got classic hits. You've got classic rock, as we mentioned. You've got grunge rock. Do we still have grunge rock? Heavy metal rock. Country rock. So many formats came out of that original format, that underground format, from the late 60s, early 70s. When I started at W4 in 1973, we were five years into the revolution, the free-form progressive rock format revolution. Now, WABX was my second stop, and that was in 1976. And boy, i got to tell you something, I'd never been so proud in my life as to say I worked at WABX. The station that glowed in the dark. Now, back in the day before me, by a long shot, by some eight years, the jocks then picked their own music. And Century Broadcasting, the owners just bit their tongue. They had to walk away. In fact, the general manager was not allowed in the on-air studio. Let me repeat that for you. The general manager... The guy in charge of the entire radio station was not allowed to open the door and enter the studio, the main air studio. WABX therefore became the springboard for the new music that no other radio station in the market would touch. The revolution was on and enlisting new recruits every minute of every day. Even the national powerhouse radio station, CKLW, oddly enough, a Canadian radio station, was forced to pivot to stay relevant with its listeners. And I'll give you a quick example. The Doors, Light My Fire, number one hit in the U.S. 
Now, that song obviously was edited for Top 40 Airplay. However, CKLW finally caved. They had no choice but to go with the six-minute version, and I nearly drove off the road the day I heard that. Another aside really quick. In the 60s, most economy cars didn't have FM radios in the dashboard, so we were forced to listen to Top 40 Radio if we wanted to listen to music. Now, the whole discussion about radios and the dashboard and all of that going back to the late 60s, early 70s, I just realized that's an entire podcast. In fact, that's what I'm going to do on our next podcast. We're going to talk about music in our cars going back to the late 60s, early 70s. So, I don't know how I got into that little format rave, but it all started with me reciting a verse from Sister Golden Hair by America going back to the 70s and my start in radio 1973 at www. So again, I apologize for being away from the podcast, but now I'm back and I feel great. And I want to mention the main reason why I've been away, and it's because I had a bit of a health scare. I had what I thought was a massive heart attack late one night in early February. And it was centered in my stomach and was going right through my back. And for the past two, two and a half weeks, three weeks, I've had an MRI, three ultrasounds, an endoscopy, three blood tests, three types of swallow scans, including one test they call an egg swallow. There's another podcast for you, Tests Ken Has Had. I wanted to bring my podcast equipment to all of these tests, but they said, "Uh uh-uh, we are medical professionals, you are not bringing that in here. But the great news is I'm going to be fine. They they basically thought it was my gallbladder about to explode, but it wasn't, and I may need a little procedure to straighten something out, but uh, I'm no stranger to being in the OR, so again, it's great to be back. Now, a couple of things I did notice while traveling from facility to facility waiting to have one of those myriad of tests done number one if there's a tv in the waiting room the first one in is large and in charge that person sets the tv channel and that's the way it's going to be for the entire day and i want to tell you my non-scientific research tells me that a lot of people that go to the doctor really enjoy the fox 2 morning show locally here in Detroit, Michigan. They don't have a whole lot of national news, not a lot of grousing about the politics. They just sort of all hang out and have a good time. Bunch of people, I mean a lot of people, on set, doing what they do best, talking back and forth. Light and lively they were. Now, here's number two. No matter how much you think you've pre-checked in, maybe on your computer at home or on your smartphone, you are never done with paperwork when you go to the doctor. Never never ends. We just want you to fill out this. Okay, now you're done. Oh, one more thing. Number three, waiting room chairs. I made a big study out of this. Did a lot of looking. Should have taken some pictures. Waiting room chairs are configured differently in every waiting room, and I don't know why that is. Every one, every waiting room, including one waiting room, had like the airplane seating look, like three seats behind that three seats behind that three seats it was very weird number four when the healthcare professional opens the door and looks down at the list or the manifest and is about to call out a name everyone gets that hopeful feeling only to be crushed when they hear Mrs. Parker Mrs. Parker And then the two walk off like best friends. And you slump back into your chair. Number five, they save the meanest part of your doctor's visit for last. That's the you alone in the room with all the stuff in there, that thing you lay down on with the white paper roller. You hear all kinds of action outside the door, but... Nobody's opening your door. Or you hear footsteps, and then all of a sudden you hear the door next to your door open, and you hear lively conversation going on in the room right next door. 
And may I recommend that you bring a nice set of headphones and have a listen to your favorite podcast while you're there. So that's it for me grousing about the doctors, the doctor's offices, and all of the tests. I'm just glad to be in front of my microphone getting ready to tell you what we're going to listen to right now. Oh, finally, at the end of the day, I have nothing but the highest praise for all of the people that work in the health profession. I've encountered a ton over the past few weeks, and from the docs to the nurses to the PAs to the techs, everybody up front, I just want to thank you for being so helpful, and I really, really do mean that. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here we go with today's featured guest, Thomas Hayden Church. He played the part of Lowell Mather on uh, the NBC sitcom Wings. I like that show a lot. It was on from 90 to 95. He was in television for a couple of seasons, lead role on Ned and Stacy, played opposite Deborah Messing. In 2003, played the role of Jack in Sideways, great movie with Paul Giamatti. I swear to God, the guy never stops working if you look at his IMDb. What else, of course, he does voiceovers really, really well. So thank you for listening, and I promise to see you soon. And right now, for your enjoyment, ladies and gentlemen, here's Thomas Hayden Church. Thomas Hayden Church joins us now. Can we say next, George, George, George of the Jungle? <laughs> Thomas Hayden Church, welcome back to WJR. How are you, friend? I'm doing very well, thank you. <laughs> Bring <laughs> back vinyl. We I'm purists a, are I'm, a par- I'm a part of that. I want to be in that. I want to be in that club. Well, we that vinyl club. Uh, it's it's a one time entry fee. It's only one hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> you get the uh, certificate and the badge, and uh, anything from my literally uh, vast record library collection from many years of being in radio. We used to get what they called cutouts and promotional copies. Hey, I was just featuring something. I, Band out of Texas, uh, the Amazing Rhythm Aces. I came across that. And, uh, Amazing Rhythm Aces. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I remember those guys. They were from Austin. Yes. Amazing Rhythm Aces. Now, let me yeah. talk Let me talk to you a little bit about Texas, because you growing up, as a matter of fact, you had some wild jobs. You were you were picking up roadkill on the side of the road in parts of Texas at one point? Picking up dead animals <laughs> in the summer in South Texas, where the heat will hover in the 110-degree range. <laughs> so... Uh, what was nice about them is that they were, you know, they were prepared. They were oven prepared by the time we got to <laughs> You know, we have a lot of wildlife here in the great state of Michigan, and you do see a lot of bumper stickers. You know, I cook my roadkill is, of course, very popular. <laughs> you know, but you've had a really interesting career. You started um, in, a, in an interesting way in that it started with voiceovers. And, folks, if you listen to... Uh, Thomas Hayden Church and, of course, Ned and Stacy, and you think of uh, Wings and one of my favorite characters, the mechanical Lowell Mather on Wings. But you started by doing voiceovers, didn't you? I did. I started. I worked in radio, and so I know what cutouts and promo copies are. Mm-hmm. Cause they, they always had those, whenever, especially when I take the albums home with me, and I'd bring it, you know, and a girl would come over and she'd be in my room and I'd put on some cool... And then there, stamped on the back of the album, was not for sale, promotional right. copy yeah, right. only. <laughs> it was like, you know, it immediately labels you as a cheap bastard. <laughs> you know? Yeah, well, yeah. There, are, there are a lot of stories we could tell about those cutout promotional copies, but uh, there was a time when uh, we used to see, I think there was a rule at our radio station. I worked at the station 25 years ago, uh, WABX, which was one of the underground free form radio stations. That was a great we one. even played spoken word Ken Nordine records. You know, <laughs> wow. I mean, and there was a guy with a set of pipes, but wow. uh, record guys weren't allowed into the station without 12 copies. Ken wow. Nordine. Yes. I don't even know that. Name. Ken Nordine has, it was the guy that did the really eclectic Levi commercials. Very deep voice. Oh, that And he guy. sort of whispered, yeah, yeah. got my Levi's. Kind of, you know, but he, be walking yeah. over. You know, it's Levi's. a nice day to put on a pair of Levi. When you slip on a pair of Levi. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the guy really, uh, the guy's, had, the, uh, now is he still alive? I think so. Um, I, I'm guessing he is. Somebody will know because of this radio station and its heritage and its its coverage of 38 states, four Canadian 
province is and this 50,000 watt behemoth. But yes, a great voice. So you do that. And then uh, from that, you end up going out to L.A. where you get cast in a couple of different things. And uh, basically right. making your money acting and using your voice as well because you still do commercials. But George of the Jungle, that's the part I want. I mean, that's <laughs> that's got to be a great thing for you. So how does that go? Do you read along then? I mean, are you in the studio watching uh, just some of the print roll? When John was there? Yeah. They actually had to fly to London to uh, to get John uh, John's narrate or his uh, you know his voiceover for the ape, uh, and they had to go to Australia to get the narration. The guy that does the narration in the movie is from Australia, and uh, and you know but and could not leave. I think he's a radio guy there, and uh, you know has to be there every morning so that he could not come to Los Angeles. So the producers and the director and and whatever person are involved, the you know the the sound uh, engineer, they had to fly around the world to to get those aspects of the movie. Well, is but, this uh, something? John Cleese is a pretty remarkable individual. I I would just I would love to be in the same room. You know, you talk to guys yeah. like Tim Allen and you t- and you know Jungle to Jungle, and they said. Uh, what's not Jungle to Jungle, rather Toy Story? And they said, "What's uh, Tim? What's it like to work alongside Tom Hanks?" He said, "I would have no idea because they never right. did anything together in the studio. All of those parts wow. were laid in digitally wow. and then put together after the fact." Same thing with uh, you know with our movie. Uh, you know, John Cleese's voiceover came in um, you know way after because. They, you know, he, I don't know how, I don't even remember who was doing his lines whenever we were shooting with the ape. I didn't have that many scenes with the ape, actually. I was just saying, people that are just dialing by hearing Thomas Hayden Church, George of the Jungle star, saying, I didn't really work uh, in that many scenes with the ape. <laughs> it's like, who's he talking to? <laughs> you know? One of those absurd moments. Talk about Don hey. Pardo, though. Go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah, Don Pardo did. He actually laid in the narration for a working cut of the movie. But uh, they thought, you know, they didn't think that he was quite right to do the narration. Uh, but uh, it was nice to kind of to have him for a while. You know, we had him for a little while. Well, you know what, I have to That's ask, cause, because I was thinking about this will be whatever, I think the 20-something season for Saturday Night Live, and it is not a show, in my opinion, without the opening remarks of Don Pardo. Right. Uh, how old is Don Pardo? Do you know, Thomas? I would say that he's probably he's got to be I would he's got to be in his mid 70s. Yeah. He's got to be and he might even be he might be closing in on 80. I was going to say I, I would yeah. think. Yeah, going with I, mean, a, I I I actually met him a number of years ago at uh when I was working for NBC and of course he was still the you know the the announcer for for Saturday Night Live. Right. And uh he seemed like a, you know, he's 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 an older gentleman, but he's such a gentleman, and he's been around forever. I mean, he worked in radio back in the, you know, in the 40s and yeah. the 50s, and uh, just has a remarkable presence. He's really, and, and such a sweet man, too, very sweet man. All right, Thomas, be well, and uh, look for George of the Jungle. Thank doing, you, Ken. Doing big yeah. numbers, and, and great to have you alongside, friend. All right, you guys, have See a you good later. day. Thomas right, Hayden man. Church, uh, who plays Lyle in Disney's George, George, George of the Jungle. Watch out for that tree. You can subscribe to the Ken Calvert Show podcast on Apple iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, Spotify, or iHeartRadio. It's also available by going directly to www.thekencalvertshow.com. You can reach Ken at kencalvertpodcast at gmail.com. The preceding program is the property of Ken Calvert and may not be rebroadcast without the written permission of Ken Calvert. <laughs>